And then uh, there's the other issue of green roofs, and we know all about that. We've seen spectacular examples of it here in the CH2 building, of course. But green roofs we're going to see a lot more about. Why is that? Well, look, let's look at these statistics. In Chicago, they found that the roof temperature was reduced by 30 degrees in the height of summer. And they found that not only that, but the air intake uh, of, of new fresh air coming into the buildings around that building uh, was reduced by 9 degrees. That's a spectacular uh, saving of energy. Um, uh, I mean, even a one degree reduction, as you know, is, a, is, a, is what is it, 10% difference in energy costs? I mean, you, that's a big one. If we can reduce your intake costs on a hot day by, by nine degrees, that's a spectacular thing. People say, well, you can't do it in a dry country. Well, California's doing it big time. Um, at Toronto, 8% of, uh, 8%, uh, they reckon if 8% of their buildings are green roofed, it will lower the whole of the heat island by two degrees in the center of the city. Um, in, tw in Germany, 12% of the roofs are already green. In Tokyo, they say that if 20%, if, 20, if, if already um, they are insisting that 20% of their new roofs are green. If half of, the, of their roofings are green, they think that they will save one million a day in cooling. So it's an easy fix. Uh, of course, it's more significant the, the lower, the flatter um, the, uh, the building, the wider the floor, area, uh, floor area, area, the wider the roof area. But we're going to see a lot more about this, too, for other reasons. Um, building high-rise books, of course, as you know, is really relatively inefficient in terms of, of heat and light. Um, the low-rise with its openness, I mean, uh, the day like yesterday was, was, was an interesting case in point. What a beautiful day it was. The living temperature was absolutely perfect, and there was a nice natural breeze. And yet my hotel room was symmetrically sealed, and we were burning up electricity simply to make sure I didn't suffocate to death. That's a bit sad. And now, can we re-engineer these things? Difficult. Uh, can we actually design living spaces that aren't hermetically sealed concrete and glass boxes? Yes. I think in future generations, we will see tall towers which are completely hermetically sealed as real last century objects. And we will see um, a much more uh, use of open space, of natural lights, natural ventilation, and the rest. Now, I know that in the CH2 building has been enormously innovative in lots of these areas. Renewable power. It's a bit of a fad, isn't it? We all put these little things on top and completely useless in terms of the actual ecological footprint. But I don't mind them. After all, it's a nice visual reminder that we're actually in the business of, uh, of saving the world. Um, and even if it only generates 0.001% of the electricity of the building, um, perhaps it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice thing. It doesn't actually cost anything terribly much to put it up there. Wind power. Um, on a large site, of course, is much more feasible for a university and the rest, and the payback period is really nice and small. Solar cells, uh, we're seeing dramatic falls in the cost of solar cells. Actually, the manufacturing cost of solar cells, as you will know, is falling much, much faster than the price, for one reason. Hmm. Well, it's a seller's market. There just is not enough capacity. 70% of all the world's, world's solar cells are bought by... Let me say again, 70% of the output of all solar cell companies in the world are bought by Germany. Now, I may be wrong about the percentage, maybe it's fallen a little bit, but it's about right. Uh, and the most solar cells, uh, the largest group of solar cells in the world are made in Germany. <laughs> well, well, they're one of the largest. Why? Because of government policy. And again, it shows us the reason uh, why we, we should pay attention to trying to really look very carefully at where Australian government policy is going to go. Um, what happened was uh, the German government thought of a neat trick to encourage this stuff. And does anybody know what it is? One single neat trick to, to turn their country into the global leader for the next most exciting technology to save the world from global warming. And as a technology engineering uh, uh, na nation, they wanted to be at the forefront of it, so the government was interested in driving it for ecological reasons, but also economic reasons. And, uh, and uh, does anybody know how they did it? Just one simple step? Hmm? Yeah, and a, a subsidy in one particular area? Absolutely. You pay them a fortune for every unit of electricity they actually donate back to the grid. Um, wonderful thing to do. And... And remember, stability is very important because government policy keeps changing. So they've guaranteed the price for, I think, the next 15 to 20 years. Hmm. They may learn up to regret that. They may land up bankrupting them. 
when after the whole world starts putting solar cells and starts selling electricity back to the Germans, not quite, but uh, uh, it's, it's only for people that actually generating electricity inside Germany. But so, even so, there, it's a massive distortion of a market, and it's been a helpful boost. Um, and it's driven the price of solar cells artificially high. Solar cells, all it is is computer technology. It's just silicon wafers and, and other bits and pieces like that. And there's next generations coming. And just as you've seen the price of silicon chips come down dramatically with, with economies of scale, so the German government also have done the world a favor. Because they thought to themselves, look, it only takes a couple of national governments to say, come on, every roof's got to have this stuff on it. Or we're going to massively encourage it. We get the volumes up, the prices come down, and then it's worth people installing it without a subsidy. But you have to get to that level of volume somehow, and that takes a big, courageous step. And if the Australian government was to do the same, uh, it would put the whole of the global market into a different league altogether. And you would find the cost per, per, per unit of solar cell electricity would fall towards zero. And there are many pundits who are beginning to see the day when without, without any subsidy, the cost of generating a unit of electricity over a 20-year period using solar cell could drop as low as coal-fired power stations 